On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, welcome to the Taylor Road State Road 15A Access Management Public Hearing. Thank you for attending. The purpose of this public hearing is to allow interested persons an opportunity to give feedback with regards to the conceptual design of this proposed access management project. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns relative to FDOT compliance with Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, FDOT District 5 Title VI Coordinator at 719 South Woodland Boulevard in Deland, Florida, 32720-6834, Phone number 386-943-5367, email jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us, or Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator, at 605 Suwanee Street, Mail Station 65, in Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, phone number 850-414. 4753, email Jacqueline at dot.state.fl.us. All inquiries or complaints will be handled according to FDOT procedure and in a prompt and courteous manner. This hearing is being held to afford all citizens the right to understand the project and comment on concerns to the Florida Department of Transportation. The hearing is being held to comply with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968, as amended. This public hearing is also being held in accordance with Chapter 120 of Florida Statutes. This public hearing is being held in accordance with the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1968, as amended, 23 U.S.C. 128, 40 CFR 1500-1508, 23 CFR 771, Section 339.155, Florida Statute, and Executive Order 11988, Floodplain Management, and Executive Order 11990, Protection of Wetlands of the Constitution of the United States of America. This public hearing was advertised consistent with federal and state requirements and is being conducted consistent with the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. The Florida Department of Transportation would like to introduce Gene Verano, the department's project manager. With us tonight is Robert Neal with SRD Engineers, the project consultant. He is the engineer of record for this project. There will be a public testimony period following the presentation tonight. If you would like to make a public statement, please hand your completed speaker request card to a staff member. Each speaker is allotted three minutes. Speaker request cards need to be filled out in order to speak. If you need a card, please raise your hand. This public hearing is being held to allow interested persons an opportunity to give feedback concerning the conceptual design of the proposed improvements to this intersection. A verbatim transcript is being made of this public hearing by the court reporter and anyone wishing to make a public statement regarding the proposed elements of the project are encouraged to do so during the statement period at the end of this presentation by filling out a speaker request card. Your statements will be included in the official record of this public hearing. You can also make a statement directly to the court reporter for inclusion in the official record by filling out a comment card and providing it to the court reporter. If you provide your name and address, the Florida Department of Transportation will respond in writing to your question or comment provided during this meeting. If you do not want to make a formal statement for the record, Project Consultant staff and Florida Department of Transportation staff will be available after the presentation to answer any questions as well.
The access management improvements are being designed to improve safety along Taylor Road in accordance with a July 2017 FDOT safety study. Directional medians will be installed, restricting left turns out of some local roads and or driveways onto Taylor Road. Modifications like this improve safety in the area by reducing the number of conflict points for drivers. A signal will be installed at South Clara Avenue to account for future traffic growth. This design meets federal highway standards, state of Florida design standards, Florida state statutes, and Americans with Disabilities Act standards for accessible design. Access management is the careful planning of the location, design, and operation of driveways, median openings, interchanges, and street connections. The purpose of access management is to provide access to land development in a manner that preserves the safety and efficiency of the transportation system. Good access management practices strive to separate conflict points by providing a reasonable distance between driveways and between median openings. And this brings us into another question. What are conflict points? Conflict points are locations along a roadway where the paths of two vehicles can legally cross. Each conflict point is a location where a crash can occur. At a four-way intersection, there are as many as 36 conflict points, but this diagram represents the 18 major conflict points, with major being defined as angle, left turn, and U-turn conflict points. One scenario is a vehicle attempting to make a U-turn. That vehicle can cross paths with another vehicle making a left turn from the side street, and it can also cross paths with a vehicle traveling straight in the opposite direction. So that situation has two conflict points. A basic principle of access management is to limit the number of conflict points along a roadway by limiting the number of driveways and median openings and restricting certain movements at some median openings. Conflict points decrease as the median opening becomes more restricted through access management. So as you take a full median opening with 18 major conflict points, with angular left turn and U-turn conflict points, and you start to restrict movement, the number of conflicts decrease. If you create a two-way directional median opening where a vehicle can only turn left or U-turn in both directions from the median and cannot turn left from the side roads, you reduce the conflict points from 18 to 4. If you create a left-in only median opening where a vehicle can turn left or U-turn in one direction only from the median, you reduce the conflict points from 18 to 2. If you close the median opening entirely, you are left with no major conflict points. By reducing conflict points, we reduce the potential for crashes. Not all crashes are correctable by access management. Collisions that could be corrected by the modification of the existing raised median were the focus of this study. Understandably, you may have more questions about access management. The Florida Department of Transportation has produced an access management brochure, of which we have a few copies here today, that you can take with you. It is written in a question and answer format, where the commonly asked questions are answered in a format that is easy to understand. If we do not have enough to go around this evening, the brochure can also be downloaded off the internet at the CFL Roads website noted on this slide. Later in this presentation, we will give you tips on navigating this website. The existing typical section that a driver would encounter traveling westbound along Taylor Road consists of two travel lanes in each direction, four foot wide bike lanes in each direction, and a center turn lane. The proposed typical section will consist of two travel lanes in each direction, four foot bike lanes in each direction, and a 14 foot wide raised median. At designated median opening locations, a traffic separator or concrete median and a left turn lane will be constructed. The outside lanes will be reduced in size in order to accommodate the separator and the turn lane.
The existing conditions west of South Adele Avenue consist of a five-lane section with center turn lane and no median restriction. A concrete median will be constructed with a U-turn lane in the westbound direction. A U-turn apron will be constructed to allow larger vehicles to make the U-turn here without off-tracking. Currently at South Adele Avenue, vehicles can turn left onto Taylor Road from South Adele Avenue, in addition to vehicles being able to turn left onto South Adele Avenue from Taylor Road. At this location, a directional median opening will be constructed with a concrete median east of South Adele Avenue and a traffic separator to the west. A left turn lane will be provided in each direction. New inlets will be constructed in the concrete medians here as well to drain water from the south side of Taylor Road. The left turn lanes on the side streets will be removed since the new median will prohibit left turns onto Taylor Road. There is currently a center turn lane at the driveway for Open Air Christian Church, which allows left turns onto Taylor Road and from Taylor Road to both driveways. A directional median opening will be constructed with concrete medians in both directions, prohibiting left turns onto Taylor Road. A left turn lane will be provided in the westbound direction, and a U-turn lane will be provided in the eastbound direction. A U-turn apron will be constructed to allow larger vehicles to make the U-turn without off-tracking. New inlets will be constructed in the concrete mediums to drain water from the south side of Taylor Road. South Clara Avenue is currently a non-signalized intersection with stop sign control. Currently, vehicles can turn left onto Taylor Road from South Clara Avenue. In addition to vehicles being able to turn left onto South Clara Avenue from Taylor Road, as well as cross Taylor Road and continue on along South Clara Avenue to the north and south. A new traffic signal will be constructed at the intersection to accommodate future traffic growth. A traffic separator and a left turn lane will be provided on each side of the intersection. Currently at South Florida Avenue, vehicles can turn left onto Taylor Road from South Florida Avenue. In addition, Vehicles are able to turn left onto South Florida Avenue from Taylor Road. A directional median opening will be constructed separately from this project, prohibiting left turns onto Taylor Road. A concrete median will be constructed east of South Florida Avenue, and a traffic separator will be constructed to the west. A left turn lane will be constructed in each direction. At Woodland Boulevard, there are currently a left turn lane a through and left turn lane, and two right turn lanes. A traffic island will be constructed in between the through lane and the right turn lanes to provide a larger radius return as well as a refuge for pedestrians crossing Taylor Road at the crosswalk. To recap the key design elements of this project, directional mediums with left turn lanes will be constructed at South Florida Avenue, Open Air Christian Church, and South Adele Avenue. A signal will be installed at the intersection of Taylor Road and South Clara Avenue. Two U-turn aprons will be constructed to allow larger vehicles to make U-turn movements without off-tracking, and all lanes of Taylor Road will be resurfaced within the project limits. Drainage inlets will be added along the south side of new medians and traffic separators. Access to driveways and business entrances will be maintained during construction. All lanes will remain open in the event of a declared emergency. Construction will begin in the summer of 2020. The design plans are currently scheduled to be completed in early 2020. Construction is anticipated to begin in the summer of 2020. For current project information, visit www.cflroads.com. You can access the project by clicking on the Volusia County tab. Then select the project under FPID 441414-1. When you open the link, you will find important project information, such as the documentation provided at this meeting, 
the estimated construction costs, and contact information for the department's project manager. We are now going to proceed with the public comment phase. If you would like to make a public statement, please hand your speaker card to a staff member. If you would rather make a comment, please fill out a comment card and return it tonight, or drop the comment form in the mail by May 20th, 2019. We are now at the public comment phase of this public hearing. The procedure will be as follows. Fill out a speaker request card and hand it to a staff member. State your name and address. The limit is three minutes per person to allow time for all who would like to make a statement. Everyone will get a chance to make a statement. Transcripts will be made available upon request. On behalf of the Department of Transportation, thank you for your attendance. If you would like additional information, feel free to approach staff members after the public statement phase has been completed.